The purpose of this lesson is to understand LAN cables and the TIA-568 categories of LAN cables and the line speed of LAN that each supports. We'll also discuss practical issues of what category to install and the structure of cabling in an organization. LANs for the most part run over cables inside buildings. The term cable is often used to mean bundle of wires. Connectors or terminations may also be included. Copper wires are typically used for LAN cables. Copper is used because it's cheap, pliable, corrosion resistant, and it's easy to extrude like toothpaste out of a tube into long thin wires. Historically, copper wires have been used for two-wire telephone circuits called loops. The two wires are twisted together to reduce pickup of noise and so are often referred to as twisted pair. The wire may be solid or braided, the latter being more expensive to manufacture but better resistance to breakage. Often the wire inside the walls is solid and the wire in patch cords is braided. A shield may be placed around individual pairs and or around the entire bundle of wires in a cable. The shield is a metal foil or mesh that prevents noise from reaching the wires inside it. Normally we use unshielded twisted pair because adding shielding to reduce the noise also reduces the frequency response of the cable and thus the ability to signal over it. The most widely followed standard for LAN cables is TIA-568, published by the Electronic Industries Association and its Telecommunications Industry Association subgroup. This standard defines categories of twisted pair cabling that support different line speeds. Telecommunications Systems Bulletin TSB67 adds the requirements and methods for field testing installed cable systems. Taken together, these are the authority on how to design and install a structured cabling system. The TIA-568 standard specified a number of categories or CATs of cable. TIA-568 Category 1 cable is existing telephone cables, also called rusty twisted pair. That's the stuff that goes into your house. Category 2 cable was 25 pair multi-conductor cables for old key telephone systems that had buttons to press to access different lines and they'd flash if it was on hold and there was a red button. Category 3 cable was specified for 10 megabit per second ethernet on twisted pair, also known as 10 base T. Category 4 cable was specified for the 16 megabit per second version of token ring. Category 5 cabling was for the future at up to 1000 megabits per second. The future has arrived and now all of these categories are obsolete. Category 5 cable was supposed to handle gigabit ethernet but in practice turned out to be missing the specification of required transmission characteristics. Enhanced Category 5, also known as CAT5E, was specified to guarantee the operation of a thousand base T. Category 6 cable is specified to support 10 gigabits per second on twisted pair. As you'll notice, it starts being necessary to specify the frequency bandwidth supported on the twisted pair, along with all of the other transmission characteristics to enable communications at these line speeds. In theory, Category 7 supports 100 gigabits per second on twisted pair. All of these categories specify cables with four pairs, or eight wires, and a maximum length of 100 meters. The difference between the categories rests in guaranteed transmission characteristics of the cable, including specifications for near-end crosstalk, attenuation to crosstalk ratio, the supported frequency bandwidth, and other characteristics, all of which affect the maximum possible information transfer rate, and hence what kind of devices can be successfully attached to each end of the cable.
One of the main factors in getting a cable certified to meet the TIA 568 category is quality control, particularly in the consistency of the twisting and placement of the pairs. Two pairs will be twisted at a particular number of twists per inch, but offset by half a period to minimize crosstalk between the pairs. The other two pairs will be twisted at a different rate that's not a multiple of the first one, similarly with the twists exactly not lined up. How well and how consistently this is accomplished during the manufacturing process determines how successful the manufacturer will be in having the cable certified as meeting the TIA 568 category standard. When determining which category of cable to use, life cycle and cost are determining factors. For a patch cable connecting a DSL or cable modem to a device inside a residence, where we have an expectation that the line speed will not exceed 100 megabits per second in the foreseeable future, then CAT5 patch cables may be used. For an extra 10 cents, a CAT5E patch cable would allow the continued use of the cable were the line speed to increase above 100 megabits per second, as it inevitably will at some point in the future. When wiring a building, the cost of the labor to pull the cables is far more than the cost of the cable. Conventional wisdom is to install the highest capacity available cable at the time the building is wired to avoid ever having to rewire the building. The person who worked for a school board who got upset at me in a class for telling them they'd made a mistake wiring their schools with CAT3 to save a bit of money is to this day stuck at a maximum of 10 megabits per second when the rest of the world is at 100 megabits per second and 1000 megabits per second. At a minimum, Category 5E cable would be pulled in a building. The smart money would install Category 6 certified cable, terminated at one end on a Category 6 certified wall jack, and at the other end on Category 6 certified patch panels. Patch cords would then be used to connect the computer's LAN jack to the wall jack at one end, and from the patch panel to an Ethernet switch at the other end. Ethernet switches are covered in an upcoming lesson. The maximum run length of the cables, including runs through risers, poles, and conduits, is 100 meters, or 330 feet. To be conservative, the patch panel and switch would be located in a wiring closet serving a radius of perhaps 100 feet. These wiring closet switches could be connected to centralized Ethernet switches on each floor, which are then connected to a switching router in the communications room, possibly using fiber. A switching router, or a routing switch, combines the functions of a LAN switch and a router, along with many other functions like DHCP, and we're certainly going to talk about those in upcoming lessons. In other cases, the wiring closet switches will be connected directly to a centralized switching router with regular LAN cables. Since the labor cost is usually far greater than the cable, it's strongly recommended to install cable with capacity greater than immediate needs and twice as many cables as what the conventional wisdom dictates. Two Category 6 cables to each work area would be the Cadillac solution. Two Category 5E cables to each work area would be well positioned for the future. One Category 5 cable to each work area would probably be viewed as a mistake 10 years down the road. In this lesson we've covered LAN cables, the TIA 568 categories, understanding CAT5, 5E, and 6, how all cables are four pairs, how the pairs are twisted, how the manufacturing quality often determines whether the cable can be certified as meeting the TIA 568 standard, and we discuss practices for wiring buildings.